Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our workshop. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, an API and uh, new stuff going on in there, and uh, sort of introducing the concept of, of native modules and porting native modules uh, to an API. So let's introduce ourselves. So I'm Gabriel. I work at Intel um, and uh, on an API, by the way. I'm, I'm also part of the technical steering committee, and uh, these are some of the things that I implemented when we were developing an API. I'm Michael Dawson, IBM's community lead for Node.js. That means I get to spend a lot of time working in the community. I'm on the technical steering committee, and in particular, work as part of the NAPI team as well. And I also get to work with a lot of great teams within IBM. We do things like keep Node.js running on our platforms, make sure our cloud is a great place to deploy Node, and um, you know, use NAPI in, in building some of our modules. And I'm Jim Schleit. I'm the head of Inspiredware, a small consultancy in Ashland, Oregon. We've been in the web space since 2003, uh, web exclusive. And early on, we were uh, implementing in C and C++ and have since moved to Node. And therefore, NAPI is of interest to us as a, as a bridge between our legacy code and, uh, and Node. Uh, my participation is primarily on the build tools and documentations as part of the NAPI team. Uh, our company is particularly interested in the adoption of Node and JavaScript in the scientific and engineering communities. And to that end, we are working on an automated tool, a tool that will automate the creation of NAPI bindings. So if that's of interest to your, your company, we should really talk. Oops. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you to be here. My name is uh, Nicola Del Gobbo. I work as a developer at Pacri, a small company in the uh, south of uh, Italy. In, um, for the most part of the time, I take care of implementing backend systems. And to do that, I use a lot of uh, Node.js, JavaScript, and sometimes C or C++. In my spare time, I try to give my contribution to open source projects and for more in part of an API team. Uh, recently, I started working on the possibility to write a native add-on for Node.js using a programming language different from C and C++. And that's it. This is why I'm in very short terms. And I guess, you know, we just want to acknowledge that we're not the only ones contributing. We're just the ones who happen to be able to make it here to do the workshop with you. Um, so there's been contributions from a number of other people. It, it's been actually quite a good number of years where we've had like you know people showing interest, getting involved um, from all sorts of different com companies. And I just even say like you know I think it was two or three years ago that we did a presentation similar to this or more of an introduction to an API at Node Plus JS Interactive, and it ended up with Jim and Nicola getting a lot more involved. And so if you're wondering how you get involved and, and help out with an API, this is a great starting point. All right, so, uh, so here are the objectives of today's uh, uh, workshop. So uh, we'd like to give you a brief orientation uh, to NAPI, the background on NAPI, why we have it. Um, and then we're hoping that you leave with an awareness of the available tools. And we hope today through the workshop you get a good start on your own projects or say porting a, a current module. Um, so. <laughs> Um, what, what we will do is speak briefly to give you a live presentation about uh, NAPI and its counterpart, Node Add-on API. And then what you will have is a chance to work on online tutorials at your own pace. So if you're a beginner, there'll be options for you. If you're already in NAPI and interested in some of the newer features, uh, the tutorials will, will guide you through that. You'll also have a chance to work on your individual projects, or if you're interested, we have modules that are available to be ported into NAPI. And then at the end, we'd like to do a wrap up and an, and an assessment. Okay, so uh, be, um, the purpose of this workshop is uh, to teach you how to implement an NAPI done using uh, NAPI. But before to start, you need to know what is an NAPI done. We can refer to this uh, definition that came from the Node.js documentation. And native add-ons are defined uh, uh, like dynamical link shared objects that can be loaded uh, 
as uh, any other JavaScript module through required function, and they are written in C++. Uh, this definition is very complete and uh, precise uh, because they ask that uh, um, native don't are written in C++, and you need to compile your code. And at the end of this process, so you will obtain a shared library that node uh, will be able to load uh, using a require function. So you don't need any boilerplate code to load uh, this particular module. Uh, usually, native John are uh, uh, used to uh, binding uh, to, to bind um, C and C++ uh, libraries or application and uh, uh, to um, uh, speed up your uh, Node.js application, especially if you want to execute CPU bound operation like image uh, processing. But uh, how is it possible? Uh, call uh, native code direct from JavaScript? Uh, the answer is uh, another question. Uh, what is uh, Node.js? Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. It uses uh, uh, JavaScript engine uh, to parse and execute your JavaScript application. And uh, um, there is a binding uh, between uh, the API exposed by the engine in uh, the case of Node. Uh, um, the engine is V8, uh, and um, um, this binding allows you to expose C++ function as function inside JavaScript. In poor words, you can uh, use uh, the API exposed by V8, that uh, are C++ API, to create any kind of, of JavaScript object like uh, you would in uh, plain uh, JavaScript. Uh, so uh, you can understand that uh, Native DOM mechanism give us uh, great powers, uh, but from great powers come great responsibility. I'm saying this because there are some problems that uh, you need to know about uh, Native DOM development. The ability to develop native add-ons has been part of Node since the very beginning. Um, the, the, the issue with that tool called NAN was that it was tied very tightly to the, the V8 API. Um, what, one of the motivating factors for, generate, or for creating an API is that what we found is that 30% of the modules depend on a native add-on. So for example, Node SAS, which is listed here, which is a native add-on, uh, has 4 million downloads per week. So, um, uh, NAN was the original way. Uh, it, it as, as I said before, it's tightly bonded with the, the V8 engine, and uh, it, it it was the initial um, uh, effort to create uh, an uh, an API that would allow you to generate a, a native add-on. So the problem with NAN is that it was so tightly tied to the V8 engine that when there were changes in the V8 engine, it could potentially break the, the ABI stability of your native add-on. And at that point, uh, your users would see a message like, like the one shown there, which is uh, not understandable to them, which would then land as a uh, issue for, for maintainers. So this uh, fragility in the ABI was one of the primary motivating factors for creating an API, which we have today. Okay, so, so, so what exactly is an API, right? That's what we're gonna be talking about. So what, 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 what we did was, instead of, a, instead of uh, uh, trying to uh, basically expose the, the V8 C++ API to native add-ons and have people use that directly, or through NAN, which is basically the same, but with a, with a few more abstractions, um, we, what we decided was that we're going to abstract away everything, the entire JavaScript engine and a lot of the, the, the Node.js uh, uh, APIs, things like Buffer and Async Worker. These things are not part of the, the V8 engine. They're, they're part of Node.js, so they are Node.js provided tools rather than engine provided tools. And um, because we wanted this to be as, uh, as binary stable as possible, meaning that once you've compiled your add-on, uh, Node.js versions come and go and, and you go and you move into the future uh, and your add-on as compiled 
10 years ago continues to work today against the latest and greatest version of Node.js. In order to achieve that, what we decided to, to do was to create a C API, a plain C API that covers uh, basically all, the, all the, the, the JavaScript language features. And of course, some of the Node, uh, node uh, APIs. So, so think of an API uh, something like uh, like the Win32 API or or the or the or the POSIX API on Linux, you know, uh, the C C library, that kind of thing. Basic basic functions, uh, but they, they they cover pretty much everything that you'd want to do in, in a native add-on, and um, and so that's how we we sought to achieve this binary stability. So like you know, if you look at a if you look at a plain Windows application, right, it was written for like Windows 95, and it still runs today. Right? It will not fail because the, 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 the Windows API has remained so stable. The same thing can be said with, with, with Unix apps. Right? They, they, they will still run today because all they do is things like fopen and, and IO control and these things. And those things have been around forever. And they haven't changed and they haven't broken in, in like 30, 40 years. Well, we don't yet have 30, 40 years under our belt, but that's the idea basically. That's why we wrote it in C. So, so when you have an API in the picture, uh, basically, Instead of going directly, you can see here uh, from the V8 engine to the V8 public API, right? Instead of doing that, your, your code talks to an API instead, and we do the talking to the, to the V8 engine. And so if the V8 engine changes, we have the opportunity to change the implementation of, V8, uh, of uh, an API without actually changing the interface of an API. So, so you still call the same function with the same parameters that have the same meanings, and you get the same return value as you did in an earlier version of Node, Right? So, so your, your binary interface doesn't change at all, but we change our implementation. Right? So, so that, that's the difference between NAN. With, with NAN, uh, you, the, the interface remained the same, but once you compiled your code, the compiled code uh, would only work with, with a certain version of Node.js because the meanings of things change, function parameters change, and so you have to recompile your code when the next version of Node comes out. Uh, although you don't have to change your code anymore, because NAND changes, your code doesn't change, you still have to recompile. So with an API, you don't even have to recompile. You just release it, and everybody uses it for the next eternity, basically. So, so OK, so this is an illustration of that, right? So without an API, this is what happens, right? This is Node.js version 6, V8 version 5.1, and then the Node module version is 48, right? So what happens? A new version of Node comes out, and the, a, the, the ABI is completely different, right? And it no longer matches. So in, in, in the best case, you get something like unresolved symbol, blah, blah, blah. I can no longer load your module, right? In, in the worst case, you get something like your module works perfectly, but in this very obscure corner case, because the meaning of this parameter changed, right? You're passing zero, which used to be an enum value meaning x. Now it's an enum value meaning y. The engine does something else, and you set fault, right? It's like, why did that happen, right? So, so to avoid these mysterious sort of failures, we have node module version, right? which is basically like, OK, look, I'm going to fail you because I can no longer trust that your ABI matches this one, even though it looks like it does. We know that the ABI has changed. Therefore, we're going to increment this node version, node major version, or node module version, and then we will simply refuse to load one that, that was compiled with the lower one. Right. So this was a conscious decision on the part of Node.js. So with an API, what happens is the initial state is the same. Right. I mean. You know, when, when you build your module, it's freshly built. Obviously, it's going to run against the version against which it was built, right? But the difference is because uh, your, you, you now have the C API, which we have promised will not change in meaning or in, or in structure, we can later add new a APIs, but we cannot change the existing ones, right? So what we do when we add newer ones is we do this, right? You have the surface. That remains the same, but now there's other functionality, right? Like in, in, in NAPI version 1, there was no thread safe function, right? So in NAPI version 4, now we have a thread safe function. It's a new Node.js interface, it's great, but anybody who hasn't used it will not be affected by it because it doesn't change things like how you create an integer. That, that doesn't change, right? How, you, how do you create an object? That hasn't changed, right? It's the same C function. So if you, if you wrote the module, uh, when NAPI 3 came out and you created an object, you know, the code with which you created that object will continue to run without any recompilation and it will continue to cor correctly create an object in, in, in uh, node, node version 12, 14, 16, and wherever going forward, right? So, 
so, but one thing did change, uh, especially in the last year, um, and it's called worker threads, right? So, so Node.js used to be a runtime that, that was basically start the process, require, 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 and then run forever, right? In practice, that means run until something crashes, you shut it down, you start another instance, you start 15 other instances, doesn't matter, right? It's, it's like a microservice. So, 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 so you don't have to worry about, about what happens to the process. It's basically throwaway once it starts, as long as it works correctly while it runs. So, so this, this allowed great freedom, because what do you do uh, in practice? All these requires, they may load native modules, they may not, right? If they did, and they compiled, and they ran, everything, everybody was happy. But all these native modules, they had this freedom where they could just allocate memory and do not worry about the life cycle of the module, because, because the process would clean it all up for you anyway when it died, right? Like, you know, technically, before you return zero out of main, you're supposed to free everything you allocated, right? But sometimes you don't do that, and, and that's okay. That, that really is okay in production, because you have to think about the bigger picture, right? There is such a thing as a process, and the kernel will clean it up for you, right? So as long as you don't leave like network sockets open, which may crash a server half a world away and that kind of stuff, you're actually okay leaving some memory around. But not with, not, not with workers, right? With workers, worker turns on, loads a bunch of modules, and then turns off again. And then another worker starts up because somebody decided to use worker threads, and they load a bunch of modules, right? And then, and then the worker shuts down. And you can have this any number of times. So you end up with this, right? Whereas before, you had these little chunks of memory that were left over when the process died. Now, you end up with, with a bunch of leaks in your modules because they don't clean up absolutely everything after themselves, right? So, so, so how, how, do you, how do you go about cleaning stuff up? So we, we, have, we, we have several mechanisms, right? Um, first of all, in the core, we, well, unload the module, right? Because, I mean, if you don't unload the module, the module will be loaded. <laughs> so so that's, that's one of the most important things. Um, the other thing is you have to tell the module, hey, you're about to die, you know, you better do stuff. Because so far we didn't have such a mechanism. We had one, we had like the init. Everybody knows if you've done any native add-ons, you know that there's an init function in which you get passed. It, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a common JS. You have like module.exports, right? In a native add-on, you get, a, you get an object, and then you attach nice little properties, which are all implemented in your C or C++ code, and then you give back the object. And then whenever somebody calls a function on that object, it actually goes into your C, C++ code, right? That's, and that's all done in init. But what about like, you know, uninit, you know, like die or whatever. It's like, we, we didn't have that because we didn't need to, right? But now we need to. And, and this requires buy-in from all the native add-on maintainers because all of them need to be aware that these add-ons can be removed now. And so, you know, if you, if you have like, I don't know, like a, a, a static uh, giant structure pointer equals null at the top of your file and in, in, in it you say new giant structure, you know, then that's going to stick around, right, if nobody tells you to, to, to kill it, right? Now, there are ways that Node.js informs you of late that things are dying, right? So one, one thing you can do in, in it is to add a cleanup hook. And cleanup hook basically means, okay, this Node.js instance is about to die, so you, know, you may want to like, you know, do something or not, up to you. And, uh, and, um, and that's, that's now part of an API 5, it's stable, so you can just do that in your init and then uh, inside it, you get you get a nice snappy env, so you know you can you can still call functions in an API because the, although the environment is dying, it's not dead yet. So you can still like do some cleanup. I don't I don't believe you can run JavaScript anymore at that point, but you can do things like like uh, uh, nappy remove wrap, you know, to to get rid of native pointers, that kind of thing. Now the other thing that's experimental now is is this thing called nappy set instance data, right? And this is a little bit easier than nappy add and cleanup hook uh, for, for technical reasons. The technical difference between the two is that when you add a cleanup hook, all it does for you is, is just, you know, you give it a pointer, and at the end of the environment, it gives you the pointer back and says, hey, this was the pointer you gave me, so, you know, you better clean it up. And that's it, right? But, but so what, right? Like, that pointer is not going to be available in your binding, right? And you don't want to store it statically because then, you know, if you have five instances in five different threads, all those static pointers are going to be clobbering each other, right? 
So, so then what do you do, right? If all you have is nappy, and, uh, nappy uh, add env cleanup hook. Well, uh, when you create a binding, you can pass a void star there, which it gives you back when it gets called. So, so that's a nice way of, of sort of threading this global state through instead of using a, a, a global static, right? You can thread it through, you can pass it to async workers and so forth, but, but it's, you, you, you still have to sort of pass it around and, and you have to like change your whole init function. Now it's like, you know, nappy create function, that's what you had so far. Now you have nappy create function, giant structure pointer. And you have to do that for everything, right? So to avoid having, having to do all this threading by hand, uh, we have nappy set instance data, which is now experimental and going towards becoming part of an API 6. And that's basically like, hey, uh, we know that the, the, the nappy environment that you get, like, you know, the nappy env that everybody uses inside an API is there, is, is a different one for every module instance. So you might as well just hook this pointer on it with nappy set instance data. And then anywhere you can just say, hey, give me the data. And then it gives you back the pointer, right? And when you hooked it, you, 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 by the way, you can attach a finalizer so that when the environment goes down, you can delete it, right? So, so, so it's, a, it's a little bit cleaner than, than, than the cleanup hook. And, and it's, also, it's also more spec compliant in, in terms of like uh, ECMA script. So, okay, but there are, there are still some things that, that are not covered by this. So for example, uh, uh, references. References are one thing that is not covered by this. If, if, you, if you hook data to individual JavaScript objects and the lifetime of your native data is supposed to equal the lifetime of the JavaScript object, then what, what happens when you have these JavaScript objects left over when the engine dies, right? If they don't go out of scope, even if they do go out of scope, if the garbage collector hasn't had a chance to, 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 to say, hey, I'm cleaning you up now, then and the engine dies, then they will never be cleaned up, even though they were already out of scope, right? And if they don't go out of scope, it's even worse, because the garbage collector never even considered cleaning them up, because there were still references to them, right? So, so, then, so then what happens to those pointers, right? Uh, we actually talked about this in, uh, in TC39, and they said, we, we can't clean that up. Like, you can't just say, OK, the environment is dying, so garbage collector, go do one last garbage collection and pretend everything is going out of scope. You can't do that for very complicated reasons, which I don't fully understand, but I took their answer for granted and I said, okay, fine, yes, sir. You know? And, and so, so we have to do it. And they said explicitly that the implementers of the environment, not even the engine, the engine can't handle it. The environment in which the, engine run has to, the engines run have to handle this, right? So, so what we did was, okay, fine, let's do that. You know, let's, let us do that final run, because we know the references that are hooked up to all the native objects. We hooked them up, right? So all you have to do is keep a tally, like, okay, this thing's still hooked up, this thing's still hooked up. Environment dying, no problem. Go die, 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 basically, right? And so, so we tell everybody to die. So, so this is also a new feature, and this can also break things because, believe it or not, people were not cleaning these up, surprise, right? So, so, so now, that, that now that we are calling these functions, which we were never calling before because the garbage collector wasn't calling them, now we're finding things like, huh, wait a second. Oh, you want me to close the database, but wait, I have a query handle open still. So I need to close the query handle, then the database handle. But what if the, what if the finalizer gets called in the wrong sequence? Oh, right? So we'll, we, I think with level down, we have some of these issues, but we're working on them. So this was sort of the cleanup. And for the history, I hand it over. OK, so now I have a brief history of uh, an API. Um, from the beginning uh, uh, until an API has been uh, promoted like stable uh, API. Um, the f uh, an API uh, was kicked off for the first time uh, at VM Summit in uh, April 2016. And uh, in this summit, core collaborators discussed about uh, the VM support for uh, the Node.js. And an API was uh, identified as uh, uh, core areas uh, to um, uh, uh, improve um, the um, native agile mechanism. Um, um, after uh, request, uh, all requests, re requests that uh, we received from uh, native agile uh, maintainers uh, about uh, the um, effort to keep up with the changes in a V8 engine. And uh, then we started to work uh, to uh, shape this new uh, API. Uh, and um, most important was uh, the collaboration with the Chakra Core team 
because uh, we uh, started to um, uh, validate and test uh, the API uh, using uh, two uh, different implementations. And um, in uh, December uh, 2016, uh, we shipped uh, the enhancement proposal for an, an API. Then we started to port uh, some of key modules uh, for uh, the ecosystem, uh, like for example, node CR port, node SAS, uh, SQLite. And then uh, uh, we fixed something in uh, the API. Um, and uh, in uh, May uh, 2016, uh, an API uh, has been released uh, like uh, experimental uh, API with node 8. Uh, after um, uh, that, uh, in uh, July, uh, at a new VM summit, uh, we agreed uh, uh, on which should be the Exit uh, the criteria to exit from the experimental status. And uh, well, having met this uh, uh, criteria, um, uh, we uh, got the, agreed the agreement from the TSC uh, to exit uh, from the experimental status in March uh, 2018. And uh, then we started uh, to backport uh, an API uh, to all um, uh, LTS uh, raise lines. And uh, in the middle of this long process, uh, we started working on uh, um, support pre-built tools like node pre -Gip. And um, because, yeah, uh, we believe that the distribution of uh, native add-on is as important as its uh, implementation. Um, uh, if you want to uh, create a native add-on uh, using an API, you have two uh, choices. You can uh, use the uh, plain C API exported uh, directly from the core of Node.js. You uh, need only to uh, include in your code uh, node underscore API dot H and start uh, write your native add-on. Or maybe you can use node add-on API that, uh, yeah, it's, it's not part of the um, ABI stable API and it's distributed um, through NPM. Um, uh, another one API uh, is uh, a C++ wrapper over the C API exported uh, by the core of Node. And um, it's a collection uh, of uh, um, function, uh, classes, and macros uh, that um, help you uh, to simplify your code using C++. Uh, all uh, the code is in line. This means that uh, when you compile your uh, uh, native add-on, the compiler will replace uh, all the code with NAP, the uh, NAPI uh, function. And uh, the most important thing is uh, that uh, native add-on API depends only on NAPI. Um, today, we have uh, uh, um, uh, 300,000 downloads per week. And uh, we are at uh, uh, version 2 that we released uh, three weeks ago. And um, uh, Node Don API uh, helps you on error rendering. Uh, because um, uh, if you enable the C++ exception mechanism, uh, every uh, NAPI uh, failures uh, will be dispatched as, a C as a just a exception, uh, throwing a C++ exception. Uh, here I reported uh, the, um, uh, mm, the usage of uh, these two API. Uh, on uh, your uh, left, you can see uh, the, C, the um, uh, C++ API uh, provided by uh, the Don API, and uh, I'm creating an object. It, it, the API is very intuitive and simple. And uh, then I'm attaching uh, this object uh, property foo and set uh, string value bar. Uh, all this code will be uh, expanded in uh, um, 70 lines of code uh, uh, of uh, C um, uh, uh, API. And uh, in uh, this code, you can recognize a pattern. Uh, every, uh, almost every, uh, um, an API function uh, take as parameter uh, an environment value and return a status. And you have to check, you have always to check uh, the status uh, to um, uh, uh, intercept if there was an error or not and react. 
for example, uh, uh, throwing an error, or uh, yeah, you, you can uh, uh, do uh, what is the best for, for your use case. Um, uh, Jim, uh, before talked about an N, and uh, now I uh, introduced an another done API. Both of these uh, libraries are C++ wrapper, but, and uh, yeah, um, uh, um, both of these libraries provide uh, a single surface API uh, to write uh, an native add-on, uh, uh, but they are very different because uh, NAN is a thin and transparent layer over V8 API, and uh, it uses V8 types. So it's uh, strong bonded with uh, V8, uh, and uh, instead, uh, noted on API uh, depends on only an API, and uh, yeah, um, uh, the, uh, these guarantee the same promise of an API, compile once and run uh, on multiple versions of Node.js. And these, uh, yeah, reduce the likelihood uh, to, yeah, to change your code. Uh, switching to a different version of Node.js. Uh, we always work uh, on uh, improving API and uh, all the native add-on ecosystem, and uh, I won't tell uh, what happened in the last year. We shipped two new versions of an API. Uh, in an API 4, we added thread safe function that uh, help you to call um, the main thread from an external thread. Uh, and um, with an API uh, 5, we added the date object. Uh, we um, uh, promoted uh, like, sta um, uh, like stable API, the finalizer callback, added the uh, function to clean up the um, memory used by uh, uh, native DOM or resources used by native DOM and um, made uh, option, uh, the callback uh, for the thread safe function. Uh, in order to an API, uh, we uh, did a lot. Uh, start, start, uh, start, uh, we started from um, the documentation, then uh, we added new asynchronous API, um, um, uh, and the thread safe function uh, wrapper. And uh, thanks to uh, feedback uh, uh, um, uh, that, uh, that we received from other developers, we um, worked a lot on async worker uh, API. And uh, if you are curious, you can uh, uh, see all uh, what we did uh, um, on the issue reported in the slide. And then we added a new uh, async uh, uh, worker called the async progress worker um, that um, uh, internally uh, is uh, implemented uh, uh, using uh, the trace safe function and uh, uh, help you uh, to um, uh, report on the main thread uh, the progress that happen in an external thread. And uh, then we added a wrapper for the data uh, object. Outside of uh, Node itself, we also improved uh, some of the build tools. So in the past year, we added NAPI support for pre-build. Uh, pre-build is a tool that will combine or compile your native add-on into a binary that gets uploaded to GitHub as a release. And we've also added support for NAPI builds in uh, CMakeJS. Uh, okay, so um, you, um, when you start a new project for Native Add-on, uh, you, uh, um, uh, um, this project will be composed by two parts, one written in JavaScript and another written in CS++. And usually uh, the uh, C++ part part will be used uh, by uh, the JavaScript part to expose some future. Here I reported the structure that we used uh, on uh, the example tutorials, and uh, it's a normal JavaScript uh, project, uh, but uh, there is something new. Um, there is a folder called the SRC, where uh, uh, you, mm, there is the native code, uh, C and C++ code, 
and uh, a special folder called uh, build that contains uh, intermediary and finally uh, build products. And then we have binding jape uh, that is a special file that uh, contains all the settings uh, to build your native add-on. Um, yeah, binding jape is used by uh, node jape. Uh, and, and internally it, it used by JIP. Uh, that uh, is the default uh, building tool that uh, Node uh, use uh, to build native add-on. Um, uh, binding JIP uh, is, uh, is a file that uses uh, JSON syntax uh, and uh, allows you uh, to set uh, um, all the flags, uh, libraries that you need to build uh, your native add-on. The most important things here uh, uh, are target underscore name, that represents the name of your native add-on, and sources, uh, that is a list of your native files that you, want, uh, that you need to, to, to build your native add-on. Uh, some developers don't like JIP, uh, 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 even if because uh, it has been dismissed by Google, and created uh, CMakeJS that uses a CMake file to build a native add-on. Uh, for uh, all uh, the tutorials uh, today, uh, we use no, no, no Jeep. Okay, we're, we're almost at the, uh, the project. But the thing we wanted to mention is that people will want to use modules which have been ported to an API. So we came up with this concept of being able to add badges to your project so that people can find modules which are going to morally, more easily use with be able to be used with, uh, with different versions of Node and keep working when you upgrade. Um, so we have these badges we've created for the different versions. It's as simple as adding the URL to in, in, into your readme. And really, you want to start with, you know, what's the earliest version of any API that you support, with any API version 3 being a, a good choice, because that's the one that was supported by um, all the existing LTSs. And so unless you need to have, you know, use some of the newer features, that's the best place to start. And there's just some of the, uh, the URLs that you may need. And so when we send out the uh, slide deck, you'll be able to get those directly. OK. Uh, so the, uh, this concludes the introduction part. Um, we now have available for you to work on at your own pace uh, a set of online tutorials. Um, so the. Uh, this, this slide shows some of the topics that are available uh, on, under the tutorials, but I think what I'd like to do is bring up the slide that has the link to the tutorials. All right, so um, on the left is the, is the URL if you'd like to start looking at the online tutorials. So when you bring it up, you'll see on the left there's a table of contents, and if you're brand new to NAPI, there, there's some, uh, there are some topics for getting started. But if you're actually doing NAPI work and you're interested in more of the advanced topics, for example, the, the uh, context awareness, then you'll see that there are advanced topics farther down. So uh, the four of us are here ready to help you. If you're working through a tutorial, if you're working through your own project and uh, you have a question, or you have a suggestion, please uh, please signal one of us, and we'll be happy to work with you. Uh, if you don't have your own project and you'd like to contribute to the Node project, then on the right is a list of existing native modules that are eligible to be converted to NAPI. And some are easy, and some are very complex. So depending on your uh, uh, level of commitment to the project, you, you could pick one of those. And, and uh, we're, we're all here to help you.